Come on guys, this is Skeleton. I don't use cheap horror movie cliches here. I make fun of them in my way. As a representative of a species that has survived and destroyed their strongest and most ferocious enemies in nature, I can clearly claim that zombies are the most helpless and pathetic enemies ever for humanity. In fact, I think zombies are a blessing. They are cheap labor, unlimited and clean energy sources. Since they have no consciousness and no life, there is no moral problem in using them. Joking aside, I've been thinking about doing something like this for a long time, which is not boring and its subject is not limited to products on the market and I can try new techniques and materials. I'll be building dioramas on this topic in this and the next few videos. If this topic interests you, let's get started. Have fun! I start by cutting the foam that I will use as the base. On the foam I determine the location of the gate pillars, the grave to be excavated, the sepulchre and the paved road. I create a stone pavement road effect by pressing and drawing on the foam with a pencil. As you can see this process is pretty easy. Then with this tool you see, I press the foam and crush it irregularly and randomly. This process makes the effect I applied more realistic. With this mixture of water, white glue and toilet paper, I cover the areas that are out of the road. My goal here is to create irregular landforms. As you can see, while the mixture is still wet, I sprinkle plaster of Paris on it. The plaster absorbs the liquid in the mixture, sticking to the surface and forming irregular shapes and lumps. Exactly what I am looking for. I apply a protective layer to the foam surface with vinyl based acrylic paints. Because this foam material is not resistant to solvents, this will also be a primer. I cut the parts that need to be cut and separate them from the base. I am also gluing this part that will form the floor of the sepulchre and the ceiling of the room. While the base dries, let's make some zombies. I will use leftover figures from the other projects for this. As you see when you put these parts together randomly, they become zombies already. Of course this is not enough. I will get more combinations and effects by cutting and carving the body parts. Let's start the cutting job. I cut, drilled and carved most of the parts. I scraped the uniform details on most of them. I carved some parts more. I'm dividing them into groups to form different zombies. Let's start the assembly. I attach some parts together with wire to create more postures. I'm gonna show you a few examples to give an idea about how I built them. For example, I add legs for the zombie from scratch. And here are the two most important materials I use in this build, CA glue and baking soda. In addition to fastening the pieces together, I use the CA glue and baking soda also for the rotten flesh effect. In 
in some areas it's more effective to use plastic paste. I add the bone detail visible from the card parts. Yes, it's a little bit creepy, but keep this in mind. These are plastic models. They are not real. By fixing the heads of the figures in place like this, I can use them in any pose I want. One more little job to make him perfect zombie. This is the second type of zombie. Except for adding a few features, I use the parts as they should be. It turned into a very impressive looking zombie with a few minor details. And finally, this is the third type of zombie. Almost all built from scratch. I added the hip and spine bones first. Then I add the legs. After adding the remaining flesh details with CA glue and baking soda and some plastic putty, it's almost complete. Only this resin skull is from a detail set. Let me show you how I made the fabric details with some sticking plaster. A special thanks to Ronnie James Dio's grandma for this sign. Yes, this rocker guy once had hair. I made the eye bulbs with epoxy putty and put them in place. I'm going to use this clay to make the internal organs. I meant what's left of them. The second covering material I use is kitchen wrap. Let's make a pretty weathered zombie hat. Instead of completing the missing head detail, let's add an open brain to it. What a job. Let me show you how I made worn clothes using the sticking plaster I just mentioned. It's looking like a postman being attacked by a pack of dogs. I think it's okay for now. Now I need to build a carrying thing for these zombies to carry loads on their backs. For this job I will use the materials I have. These are some aluminum wire and some balsa and PTFE tape. Let's make the materials they carry. 
I cut a few pieces of the foam I use for the base, cover them with kitchen wrap and glue them together. I wrap it with string to make it look like it's tied with a rope. And it's done. I applied a white primer to the old parts first. Then I applied a heavy layer of dark wash. After the wash has dried, I paint some areas of the figures with airbrush and the rest with a brush. I think I am learning this figure painting job. Let's build the coffin. Of course, I use balsa wood for this. Now that the zombies are complete, I can move on to other tasks. Let's build the sepulchre. I'm using some high density foam for this. I confess, I was inspired by World of Warcraft to build this sepulchre.
I'm going to apply the carved stone effect on the surface with this very special tool. After adding some crack effects, it's done. I forgot the columns. For this I used these wooden dowels I bought from the hardware store. As I mentioned before, this foam material is not resistant to solvents. I protect it by applying a primer with a plastic based acrylics. Let's build the walls, floor, stairs and mausoleum of the burial chamber. By the way, I bought these acrylic paints from the hobby shop which sells wooden stuff and they are quite cheap compared to scale model paints. That's why I apply it to surfaces a lot. I applied the effect of stone and concrete with the dry brush method. Since these parts will receive less light, not all details will be visible. That's why I apply all the effects in an exaggerated way. It still amazes me that such a simple method can yield such good results. Let's get things together. Finally, I add some spider web. For this, I spray hairspray at high pressure. It appears somehow afterwards. Let's build the gate and fence of the cemetery. Walls first. For the brick wall effect, first I make a simple tool out of a tweezers. And I start drawing the brick details on the foam. After all the parallel lines are completed, I can now add the remaining details using with blade. Again, I prime the entire surface with a plastic based acrylic paint. This material is a water based concrete effect putty. I dilute this with water and apply it into bricks and cavities. After it dries, I remove the excess with a sanding stick. Here are my three favorite colors for the brick effect. 
I applied these three colors to the bricks respectively and randomly with dry brush method. Finally, I apply the water-based brown wash. I applied the concrete on the top and bottom, as you see. After a pigment wash, the pillars are ready. Now let's build the gates and fences. For this, I need to build an assembly station first. You can easily straighten any type of wire this way. I'm making the door decorations with the help of this template that I have simply made. After adding a few plastic parts and the remaining details, I paint all the parts with a dark metal color. Let's continue with the base construction from where we left off. After completing the excavated grave area, I covered the base with balsa. need to add a pile of soil right here. After adding the extra soil and stone details, I paint all unpainted soil surfaces. Next, I applied some static grass randomly, so that it looks natural.
Let's prepare some pigments to apply dust, soil, dirt and moss effect. I can now fix the pillars, fences and the gates to the base. And I am at the limits of my diorama building skills. If it were up to me, I would add the figures and complete the diorama at this stage. But this is a post-apocalyptic diorama and it should have vegetation to reflect that. At this point I am going to get some help and use Fabio's amazing products. From this stage on all I have to do is add these amazing materials to the diorama in a random and natural looking way. That's all. The links of the products I use and Fabio's store are in the description of the video. I highly recommend these products, each of which is incredibly realistic and detailed. I realized that instead of using them directly, I need to mix them all together to obtain more natural and various vegetation. That's why now I'm separating all the materials I plan to use one by one and divide them into parts. Let's start using these. I'm trying to make some ivy first. I'm trying to create a natural pattern from thick to thin, bottom to top, to make it look natural. Then I add various colors and types of plants to these branches to create the effect of dried, fresh and old leaves. After adding the door and other details, the sepulture is complete. Someone warned, do not let out the zombie inside. Must be a useless and crazy zombie. Sounds like a wealthy ex-politician. By the way, I'm sure you know what the zombie metaphor actually is and who the zombies represent. There is no need to talk about it. I don't want to cause political debate on the comment section. I want this part of the cemetery to be like a jungle. That's why I pile up completely random and various kinds of plants in this section. As you know, in a lush garden that looks peaceful, there is actually a war of life and death among plants. 
Each of them tries with all their might to spread, to have the sun and water the most, so that their own kind can become dominant in that region. That's why I pay attention to the same plants appearing together and spreading in the same direction, so I'm not adding it completely random. A gloomy looking tree? Why not? Even one more. As I mentioned in the video instruction, humanity has not defeated by any natural enemies, challenged extreme natural conditions, survived and reached these days in extremely primitive conditions and with zero technology. In some zombie apocalypse series and movies that we are told, Humanity cannot find a solution to this issue for many years. However, I am pretty sure that the humanity I know will find a thousand and one ways to use such a helpless and mindless creature for its own purposes. In fact, as I make fun of in this diorama, it's highly possible and logical humanity use zombies as an endless source of energy. Okay buddy, your place is ready. Have fun here. Let me tell you about the story of the diorama I built. For humans, zombies have become a valuable commodity. In fact, there is so much demand that they have started digging graves, finding useful zombies and selling them. And these guys are happy to find a solid zombie in a newly dug grave. Of course, as a movie cliche, I put a small shovel next on an obvious burial pit where it was dug with a backhoe. It has been discovered that some zombies are alpha and other zombies follow them unconditionally. In this case this is the alpha zombie and tied to the door. That's why the other zombies are just standing there. I'm putting two guard zombies in the back to protect the convoy from intruders. Fennel spray, which suppresses their aggression, has not been sprayed on them like the others. That's why they are still aggressive towards living things. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Thanks for watching. Have a fun and great day everyone.